Marvel's Midnight Suns is an incredible game. It has a satisfying combat system as it manifests to what a tactical turn-based combat is about. Each hero feels very much unique and they are faithful to how they are presented in the comics. If I'm going to rate the game based only on combat, without a doubt I would rate it as 10 out of 10. However, to better rate a game, you have to take the game as a whole. And this game is being pulled down by a number of factors. Hello guys, Genuine here of Genuine Gaming, and here is Marvel's Midnight Suns review. Marvel's Midnight Suns is a tactical role-playing game developed by Firaxis Games, the developers of XCOM 1 and XCOM 2, and Meyer Civilization game, in collaboration with Marvel Games. It features comic book characters from Avengers, X-Men, Midnight Suns, and The Runaways. As always, let us begin with the story. Dr. Faustus of Hydra uses science and dark magic to raise Lilith. Lilith is the mother of all demons, being called so as she gives birth to demons called the Lilin, which have lives of their own but always remain obedient to their mother. Hydra raised Lilith from her eternal slumber, hoping that she will aid Hydra to conquer the world. Within the following six months, a star known as the Midnight Sun begins approaching Earth and destabilizes magic, heralding the return of the Elder God, Kithon, the master of Lilith. In order to stop this apocalyptic event, the Avengers and the Midnight Suns, led by the caretaker, resurrected the Hunter, known as Lilith's child and killer. You play as the Hunter, customizable hero from how he or she looks to the abilities he or she would possess. One thing to note here, Hunter's abilities is not 100% customizable, wherein one could choose what type of power or abilities he or she possesses. But the Hunter is able to choose about 40 pre-made powers that can be categorized from light, dark, or power abilities. With regards to how he or she looks, you can choose from male or female and the way he or she looks. Both genders are voiced. With regards to the voice actors, generally, the voice actor do a good job. However, I just find some characters a little bit annoying. I just can't seem to pinpoint the cause of it though. Either it's the voice acting or the script writing. As a whole, the story is good. But I just feel the game falls short in its presentation or the delivery as you can feel some inconsistencies in the storytelling through the script. Next up, let's talk about the gameplay. Marvel's Midnight Sun has two kinds of gameplay, the combat and the Abbey exploration. Let's have combat first, as this is where the game excelled. The combat is environmental and card-based. You can use your environment and move around the battlefield, lining up the perfect shot or combo, and then launch a devastating hero abilities by using a card to gain advantage on an encounter. You will have a deck composed of 24 cards, with 8 cards for each heroes you bring to the mission. These cards represent the hero abilities and skills and they act accordingly to what card you're going to use. There are 3 types of card. Attack cards, the skill cards, and the heroic cards. They implemented well the card game mechanics of the game as I feel the superhero that I am in the game. And one would notice that the developer did their best that each hero in Marvel's Midnight Suns game is a faithful depiction as they are represented in the Marvel comics. I would say Marvel's Midnight Suns has a very well thought of combat mechanics. There is a lot of depth to it as you can approach a mission in varied ways. And your approach to a mission would depend on the setup of your three hero team. You have a striker which can deal a lot of damage like Iron Man and Ghost Rider. You have a tank who can taunt and block enemies like Captain America and Captain Marvel. You have the support like Doctor Strange. You also have a hybrid heroes who are good at both things like Nico can deal a lot of damage to enemies and at the same time she can support her teammates through buffs. Combat is in a turn-based format without time limit. You begin with a random draw of up to 6 cards. In a round, you can play 3 cards, redraw 2 cards, you discard a card to draw another card, and a move action. You can also interact with the environmental objects as long as you are able to meet the required heroic points. Then we have the boring... <clears throat> we have the other part of the game which is the Abbey. 
The Abbey is like the hub of your heroes. This is where you craft an ability, train your heroes for a new and better powers, develop relationships with other heroes for better passive buffs, and this is also where the story of the game is developed. The Abbey is huge for exploration. In my first run through, I simply skimmed through this part of the game as I am so excited for another mission. At first, I thought of the Abbey as a hindrance to the enjoyment I have with its combat. Then, as I played again for New Game Plus, I tried my best to explore the Abbey, then I just learned that there are so much good stories to be discovered in the Abbey. Just want to emphasize on the good story because the delivery of the story is pretty much below average. And if you want to know if you can finish the game without totally exploring the Abbey, yes, you can finish the game. At my first run through, I just used the Abbey for crafting, develop friendship, discover abilities, and push the story forward. To push the story, you do not need to find anything. You just simply talk to some characters. Then the graphics and optimization. The reason why I leave out the graphics in most of my review is because I do not have a beefed computer set. I'm only using a laptop with i7, 16GB RAM, and GDX 1660 Ti, falling short from my recommended setup of the game, which needs a GTX 1070. The highest preset of the game is called Epic, so I lowered my setting at high preset but still have an annoying frame drop. At the lowest setting though, I have a pretty flowing game. As of the moment, I am running at a customized graphics setup just below the high preset. In combat, the graphics looks great. Again, I do not have any qualms with it. It feels great and there is that certain satisfaction after you beat or knock out an enemy. However, there is that something that some players will get annoyed in the Abbey. The so-called invisible walls. I do not really mind about invisible walls, but for some of you who are particular with this, now you are in the know. As for the bugs, I do not notice any of my playthrough. My genuine verdict. Marvel's Midnight Suns is an incredible game. It has a satisfying combat system as it manifests what a tactical turn-based combat is about. Each hero feels very much unique and they are faithful to how they are presented in the comics. If I'm going to rate the game based only on combat, without a doubt, I would rate it as 10 out of 10. However, to better rate a game, you have to take the game as a whole. And this game is being pulled down by a number of factors. First is the presentation of the story. The story is good and it quite interests me, though it felt pretty short in the presentation either through the voice acting or the script writing or both. What I am sure of is that the Abbey exploration is being pulled down by script writing and some voice acting of some characters that annoyed me. Again, in combat, the graphics is incredible and top-notched. However, in the Abbey, there are some noticeable things that is quite negative like the invisible wall. This game is a recommendable buy for people who are both super Marvel fans and a lover of card games or turn-based combat. If not, then I suggest that you wait for a sale. For those who have played Marvel's Midnight Suns, how do you rate the game? And for those guys who watch the game review to be in the know, leave a like if it is helpful. And for those who are new to my channel, subscribe for more Marvel's Midnight Suns videos. See you in the next video. Ciao!